Controlling sound with absorption, getting that soft, squishy stuff up on the walls. By doing so, you stop those powerful primary reflections from bouncing back in the room, you reduce the distractions, and you really clean up and improve intelligibility throughout the room. And ultimately, you can't go too far wrong. One of the myths that has been put out there is that you can do, oh, don't touch acoustics, you can do more harm than good. And while this is true in a very few instances, it's not true in most cases. Most cases, it's just a matter of taking down that echo and reverberation, as I've been saying. And you know, you've been listening your entire lives. Sometimes uh, people don't give themselves enough credit. You know what sounds good and what sounds bad. When you start putting up absorption, your ears very quickly tell you what it's doing to the room, and your ears will very quickly tell you when you've gone too far. It's, all it takes really is one panel too much, and you go, you know what? a little too dead in here. Let's back it off and, uh, and go from there. One little analogy we like to use here at Prime Acoustic on how simple this stuff can actually be is think of your empty living room. When you moved into your home, you know, especially if you had a hardwood floor or ceramic tile, that room was probably pretty uncomfortable, probably pretty uh, clinical and sterile sounding from all that echo and reverberation that was going on in there. Probably heard the echo in your voice, probably heard the echo in your uh, footsteps. And then that same living room, as you slowly started to move that furniture in, hey, lo and behold, it probably seemed like a pretty comfortable place. Probably started to sound pretty nice in there. You might not even have noticed the sound, but you did notice that you're no longer hearing an echo, no longer hearing that just that big room kind of feeling. Well, think of acoustic panels, those absorption panels, as really efficient furniture. Another one on the wall is like moving in another couch into the room. You really can't go too far wrong with this. So the million dollar question with absorption for everyone is how much should you use? Obviously, if you walk into a large room and put one panel on the wall, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference. Probably not gonna hear that at all. You know, even if you put it in the most critical spot in the whole room, you're not gonna hear the difference that that one panel makes. The opposite to that is going into an, a large room and covering the walls with panels. A lot of people think, this is a misconception, a lot of people do truly think that in order to have good acoustics in a room, you have to cover the walls from floor to ceiling. And that's not the case at all. That will act, often cause too much absorption in the room, cause the room to be too dead, very unnatural feeling. If you've ever heard or, or seen an anechoic chamber, that's what these rooms are, where they're so dead that there's no reverberation at all. It gives you no sense of space, no sense of feeling. It's very unnatural. Most people can't stand being in those rooms for more than a minute or two. And that's the same problem with you know, a normal room. If you try to put too many acoustic panels on the wall, it's very quickly going to become claustrophobic. It's going to sound uh, a much smaller, feel like a much smaller space than it actually is. So what is that perfect amount? Well, the perfect amount can be a little bit different for any given room. So what we did at Prime Acoustic was literally look at 200 room designs that we had done over the past few years and rooms of every different shape, size, and purpose. We would look at a classroom. We would look at a restaurant. We would look at a gymnasium. We would look at a highest level recording studio. We'd look at someone's home theater and everything in between. Literally every type of room that people install acoustic treatment into and looked at, okay, how much did we need to put in there? How much did it take to make the difference that people started to hear? What was the audible improvement? And what was the, where did the biggest improvements occur? Where did the improvements stop happening? And looked at all those numbers, laid it all out on the uh, acoustic bell curve. So the first thing we do when we look at any given room is calculate the surface area of the walls. Look length times width and get that square footage of each wall surface area in the room. Once we've determined the wall surface area, we go, okay, how much of that do we need to cover? Well, when we looked at all these different room designs and laid it on this bell curve, we found that, you know what, it took a minimum of 10% of your walls covered in squishy stuff for the impact to be very audible to everybody. No longer subjective. It doesn't matter whether you're the four-year-old child or the 94-year-old grandmother. You're going to walk in that room and go, wow, I hear that difference. Intelligibility is going to be improved. Echo and reverberation cut down. Still going to be pretty uh, reverberant inside of that room, but it'll be cut down to the point that everybody hears it and everybody can agree this is a good sounding room. Now we did that 10% based off the square footage of the walls. Where those panels ended up might not necessarily be on the walls. 
It's just the walls that really tell us how big a room truly is because of the height. The steepest point of the acoustic bell curve is that area between 10 and 25%. This is where every panel you hang up, you're going to hear the impact. So you get that 10% minimum put in and each panel you bring in, you go, wow, that sounds even better. That sounds even better. You actually hear the results from every single panel you add. Now that might not be the case in a gymnasium, but it'll certainly be in a smaller room where each panel is going to have an impact. But the biggest performance spike, the most bang for your buck, where you're going to hear that audible impact of your acoustic panels is going to be between 10 and 25% of your walls covered in that soft, squishy stuff, as they say. Once you get above 25%, you see the curve starts to taper a little bit. That means there's going to be less of an impact. There's still going to be an audible result, but it's going to take more panels to achieve that. You, each panel you add, it's not going to be as evident as those panels you added down at 11, 12, 13%. Once you get above that 20, 25%, it starts to become a, a bit more subtle. Still making a good improvement, but definitely more subtle. Above 50%, very few rooms that are going to get this amount of coverage. You would need, first of all, a lot more panels to notice it. Put 50% of panels on your wall, you really hear that. It's a very, very audible result. 55, 60%, you would not hear the difference between 50 and that 65. You need to add a lot more to hear a little bit more gain. Just like I tell people all the time, you know, a race car, have that 500 horsepower engine, took you $1,000 to get that first 500 horsepower, it might take you $10,000 to get that next 50 horsepower. The diminishing returns is what they call it. So the different rooms that live at different levels, as I said, 10% is the bare minimum you can put in any room and hear the result. This is just quite often where I'll start out different customers when they don't necessarily know what they want to achieve with acoustics. That area between 10 and 25% is going to be the majority of your normal rooms. This is going to be your uh, churches, this is going to be your classrooms, this is going to be your restaurants, your boardrooms. These sorts of places where all you're trying to do is improve the intelligibility and bring down a little bit of that echo and excess reverberation. Above 25%, you start getting into recording studio and live music venue territory. So 25% could be uh, your 25, 30% could be your control rooms and tracking rooms. 30% um, could be the really reverberant live music venue. Again, these just gauges the uh, slight little uh, uh, rules or helpful suggestions to use these percentages. If a room is very, very reverberant, you might want to go a little bit higher than the happy medium of 20%. You might want to start them at 25%. If the room's quite good sounding already, you can probably start at 10% and then add a few more panels as necessary. But those are kind of the, the happy medium being that 20%. Once you get up to 50%, that is really only vocal booths and professional cinema. Very few rooms outside of those two examples are going to have that level of coverage. Thank you for taking the time to check out the video, Controlling Sound with Absorption. Be sure to watch part two that discusses the differences between materials.